Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an overview on our 10 kilowatt in phase solar system, the wiring on how you can actually wire your own system. I wired this entire system myself, and I'm going to show you how to wire that system right now. So, the first thing we got to talk about is the main panel. Here you can see this is where I tore the wall out and I haven't repaired it yet, but this is going over to the garage. I did a complete video on how to wire a 100 amp sub panel. And I'll put a link up here if you want to watch that, how I wired the building. And this right here is the solar um, wires coming in from the AC disconnect. Going into this panel, which is an Eaton 200 amp breaker, which has, and this is going to be pretty important, the, the main bus load has 225 amps max, and that's why we were able to use a 45 amp breaker here. The only thing that's going on in this panel is that 45 amp breaker. Uh, yours may be different because it all depends on your bus bar or your bus rating, which like I said, this is 225 max amps, all right? So that's very important. You'll have to decide that as you get into building your own, but that's all that's going on in that panel is just some labeling and the actual wiring going into it. I'll, I'll clip in a video where I have the wires out here and you'll see kind of what that looked like. And we'll run this black wire and this red wire into this. And then our white wire will go into our neutral bar right there. And then our green ground will be attached to either this side or that side. We have additional grounds in this uh, panel that will be either going here or here. Whatever is easiest to run the wire as far as bending it is how I want to do it. All right, now we're out to the AC disconnect. Those wires that you see in the inside, that, um, that elbow, well, it's feeding into the back of this panel here. Let's get a closer look at what a solar disconnect switch might look like, especially if you're using the DG222 NRB, which I would highly recommend because it's in all of your solar programs or the solar program that I will recommend you guys use if you're doing this yourself. It's fused. It, it has to have these. It's compatible with this box. So what I've done, the red wire that's taped is just our L1 that comes up from our combiner box right here. I taped it red because we are, it's actually considered L2. L2 is your red wire. L1 is your black wire going into all your breakers. So I wanted to make sure to keep it the same coming from the lugs down into the switch and then from the switch in to the panel, which is behind this wall here. So you got to run these down and around because this is the load side. You can see it there in the back. If you look right there, you should be able to see it. I don't know if you can see the text, but it says load. And that is the line side right back there. So the line then runs back down and into the garage here to our main panel. We have three panels. You can see them. I've got them labeled, right? This is uh, branch number three. Let's we'll start with one. Branch number one, branch number two, and branch number three. And if we take a look up here, I'll show you though. Our first branch is the first nine panels down this way. Our second branch is the first nine panels at the top. And then the third branch is your top four and bottom five. If we're looking at this, we know exactly where these breakers are coming from. This is our envoy. This is how we get information on how much uh, power we're actually producing. And then again, I'm gonna refer to that video where I actually showed you guys how to hook up both of these boxes and I'll clip in kind of a, a hyperlapse, I guess. And if you wanna know exactly how to do that, go, be sure to check out my other videos. All of these are your L1s. These black wires are L1s. The red wires are your L2s. You'll have two wires for every branch going into a double pole breaker. You got a black wire and a red wire. 
in each one. So this is branch one, branch two, and branch three. I kept all the red wires away from this right here. And then you take your number six ground that's coming from your equipment ground from the top of the roof. It's coming in. We kind of loop it to give ourselves room and then back up and you put it into the ground lug. Now from here, we're running number 12 copper wire underground. So we'll see it's this line right here that's running underground. And then it goes down, over, and then up. All right. And those are all number 12. I have three branches. So we have one black wire, one red wire on each branch, uncut all the way to the J box on the roof. So up here we have the junction box right in between the fifth and sixth panel on the bottom. I'm going to add in some drone footage of what that looked like before we had any panels up. And I also want to talk about how I made that junction box. I drilled three holes into the side and then took the um, in phase connectors and I secured them in to spot and then wired them into my connectors inside the box. Another important note is the direction that we laid those panels in. We laid them upright and they're huge panels. They're six and a half feet, a little bit over six and a half feet tall and three and a half feet wide. So we had to lay them like this. And the reason that you see those micro inverters all in a line on the, I'm gonna call that rail right there rail number one, two, three, and four. We put them on rail number two and rail number three. We did that because how our panels were gonna plug into those microinverters to make sure we had enough cable. So think about how you're gonna lay your panels down and where those microinverters gonna set so you can make sure you're plugging them in correctly. They make two different styles of Q cable, one landscape and one portrait mode. One's longer than the other. One's 1 1.3 meters, one's 1 1.6 meters. We bought the 1.6 meter to make sure that we had enough wire when connecting them together. It was hard finding information on how the ground wire was supposed to be ran. What ended up being the correct thing, and I don't hear many people talking about it, so hopefully if you're looking for that, you're gonna find your answer because your ground wire should connect to, let's say in that scenario there, we got iron ridge. So that first two rows are grounded. Then the top two rows are grounded. We need to ground rail number two to rail number three so it grounds the entire system, but you do not chop your ground wire. You run that ground wire, you connect it to a lug on three, then you sp don't really splice it, you just cut off the sheathing and then you connect it to uh, two or however many um, rails you have to connect it to, but you do not splice it, you just cut off the sheathing and lug it down. Then you run it through your J box into your conduit and then over to your combiner box, uncut. We do not splice it at the J box, which I could not find any clear answers on that. And finally, I come across a diagram that showed me that. And after looking closely in my solar permit package, it shows no cuts. And I said, okay, that's right, let's go with it. And it passed uh, all inspections. And I was told that was the correct way of doing it. So good for me and good for you for now knowing. That wasn't very complicated. And hopefully you understand a little bit better how to wire a solar system. If you like hearing me talk about solar or things that are going on around my property, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We have built a lot since we've been here. The building, the solar, the garden. I've uh, done some work in down on the bottom around our pond, this patio. We've done a lot and we've only been here for a short amount of time. I don't plan on slowing down and hopefully you'll stick around and join me for that journey. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Hope to see you around. I'll catch you guys in the next one.